Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless 8, this is pre market AM report for March 10th, 2016. The ECB decision on rates was just announced in the past half hour, and we can see the reaction on the markets have been extremely positive, at least for now. Keep in mind, there is a very, very important and critical press conference for Mario Draghi coming up, I believe, in about 11 minutes, 8.30 a.m., and anything can happen. Do not be surprised if futures, which are up 16, 17 points, reverse and come down really hard. Remember, actions that Mario Draghi and the, uh, and his, his committee uh, via the European Central Bank that they're taking can be construed in two different ways. It's bullish for the markets in a liquidity standpoint that a significant amount of liquidity is getting pumped into the system. I believe the QE was increased by $20 billion uh, euros, and that's a significant amount. The negative interest rates are now at 0.4%. That, in my opinion, doesn't really have that much of an impact. But the fact that they are they are very vigilant about and, and uh, forceful about making sure the finance rate for companies to borrow from the EC uh, from the from the central uh, from the banks are uh, I believe have been cut to zero or something. I gotta I gotta go through the uh, um, uh, uh, communicate uh, more in detail, but I believe one of the business blending rates have been cut to zero. So obviously there is a significant push, significant push by the Central Bank of Europe, the ECB, European Central Bank, to make sure that Europe stays afloat. And that, the, and that all the levers of growth that are needed to push Europe out of any type of recession or any type of slowdown stay in place. Now, in life, just like anything else, there are layers of meaning. And this is something that every trader and investor must understand. When you take actions of this magnitude, you're obviously kind of um, uh, 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 signaling that you're extremely worried. That's why you're doing this. Okay? That's number one. Number two, how long is this going to last? Well, generally speaking, these type of QE programs, as we saw ours, last about two years plus, right? Two or three years plus. And the reality of the thing is, and then they start to wind down, maybe a little bit longer. The key is, I'm not here to explain and give you, like I like saying, a PhD thesis on, uh, on, 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 on macroeconomics here. I'm trying to explain to you the behavioral game theory aspect of what goes on, what goes on uh, in the markets. All right. The second part is that if the markets start to get really worried that you're that he that the central banks know something that is far more uh, insidious, far more uh, 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 far worse uh, than what the economic numbers are showing, because in general that you uh, the, the economic numbers out of Europe have been lukewarm to somewhat good in the case of Germany and stuff, uh, and also Italy. But um, maybe the markets get worried and they reverse this whole move. Bottom line is, we try to read these through the through the lens of technical analysis. So let's take a look at this here. A very important reminder, in every stage of the market, from the lows to the highs to the sideways volatility move, clue to say trading has been constantly present on a 24-7 basis. The chat room has been active. Very happy to see that. I am constantly, uh, uh, um, well, as much as possible, available to answer intelligent questions uh, or any type of question for that matter. Um, and uh, and I have been, and through my reports, through my video cast, Pericro broadcast, have been guiding and helping members to handle volatility and effectively manage their trading accounts and their investment accounts. This is an invaluable service, and the only thing that I ask in return is that referrals be provided so we get a larger number of people to join our group obviously during times of intense volatility there are people who basically quit just like any other business there are the ones who stay and prosper and the ones who basically are quitters that's just the way of life there's nothing one can do about it um the second thing which i highly encourage and i've done it always and anyone who has taken it will attest to it is advanced coaching sessions i'll be hosting this weekend's one and I know my family responsibilities have grown up quite a bit uh, uh, over the last couple of months. But then at the same time, um, these advanced coaching sessions have been tremendous. And I encourage everyone who is not enrolled in them for a pittance of the money that's charged, um, not hundreds of dollars, you know, just a very small fraction of somewhere. It, I think it comes to about 40 bucks a session, which is a joke. 
Um, and I purposely do it, keep it low, so that everyone can participate and not have a, not have some sort of excuse that it's too expensive. I was approached by other uh, services which charge hundred, two hundred dollars for these type of extremely powerful uh, training sessions. And then in my case, my training sessions are far more in depth and give you a more overall encompassing view of the markets trading global economics and the whole works the key is to be an educated member who can handle their own trades and not be reliant on every single trade alert tweet that goes out there all right saying all that let's take a look at the e-minis here which are the live version of what's going on as you can clearly see here um and again, disclaimer is that anything can change at any time. Like I said, Mario Draghi comes in in about five minutes time and demolishes the whole futures rally. OK, it can happen. So at this point, if you just look at the nor somewhat of the normality of things that is going on, we are tracking this channel. I've shown this before, showing it again. Upper end of the channel, as you can see here, is up here. And that's asking a lot. However, that does complete the pattern symmetry that we are seeing. Okay, and I believe that somewhere along the line, maybe by by the end of this month, maybe by Friday, we get to S and P 2025. Now keep in mind that we are um, so that's basically how the channel is moving, right? You can clearly see here. You can call this an inverted head and shoulder. You have a head here. You have a left shoulder here, a right shoulder here. You can call it a double bottom, which is more like it. And within the context of that, an inverted head and shoulder, uh, and then, you know, and, and a surge. Now, move higher. Now, keep in mind, what's also pushing this big time is, the, is oil. Oil's getting squeezed to kingdom come. When everybody sits in one room and everybody's short, this is exactly what happens. Nothing much has really changed with oil. There are rumors about Saudi Arabia cutting output and all that stuff. But the key is Saudi Arabia is starting, finally, is starting to get extremely worried about their own finances and their budgetary shortfalls. Because remember, those countries, they can't finance their deficits and, and, and give out the free medical care and everything that they give. No taxes type, uh, type of countries. They get in real trouble when they start to renege on those things which have been around for 50, 60, 70 years. Bottom line is, at this point, I'm looking at this here. And I keep in mind, these are E-minis, right? So um, this is not the exact S&P number, which I'm going to show on the next chart. So the E-minis, uh, 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 what you do is you basically add about five or six points to this to get the uh, S&P number. Bottom line is, this is, this, this is the upwardly rising channel. And this is your large macro wedge. And at this point, if we bust loose here, we're going to move very quickly uh, towards this end. I'll give you some dates we should keep in mind, which I have mentioned before, and I'll say it again, where I believe that this rally continues to in between these, as you can see, these um, quick consolidation channels that everyone gets freaked out about. And then, and, and then this is a... Uh, um, this is a cup formation, which looks like, you know, it's moving higher. The bottom line is if we break this here, uh, which uh, which uh, I believe is around 1980 or more like 1990 or so, we can quickly drop towards, uh, towards 1975, 1977 E-minis. This is a wide channel that the market was traveling in, right, before we before we bust and move all the way here and basically crash the big uh, 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 the big uh, uh, January crash, then the double bottom. You can see how defined these moves are. And this is exactly what I try to uh, 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 teach and explain in my advanced coaching sessions, among many things. So that's it. So this is where we stand. It's not that I want to keep this simple so people can understand. And look at this. So upper end is here. 2021 so you're looking at uh, you know you're looking at another 16 e mini points uh, which would translate to about a hundred more points on the on 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 uh, before we start to top now just because it goes here doesn't mean it's going to stop there is enough pattern symmetry here to dictate uh, that uh, enough pattern symmetry here to dictate as I mentioned before that um, this thing this thing basically follows Ate that same pattern. So bottom line is to keep it real simple. They run here around 2050, 2060 uh, plus S and P, and 2050, 2060 plus uh, E minis is where we top, and it'd be a beautiful shorting opportunities in my opinion. Because at that point you can call this a large cup. 
there will be a handle formed and uh, that handle could bring us down three four hundred points and then from that handle we see what happens whether the handle breaks down or whether the handle breaks up in my opinion given the uh, 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 velocity and the momentum that the global uh, liquidity markets and the central bankers are providing we probably break higher uh, and test the high sooner than later um, before we test the lows but we'll see so saying all that keep in mind that I'm a tactical bull and certainly a tactical bear and uh, so I'll always be uh, I'll always be on my toes uh, and extremely cognizant of every single move in the market so let's take a look at this here on the hourly chart now this is the hourly chart of the S&P 500 uh, obviously this is not showing you uh, uh, pre-market numbers because S&P this is not the futures that's the actual S&P so draw this out in real time for all of you so there's one line here which goes up to 2010 I've been talking about this consolidation channel for days here and people who have heeded my call have done extremely well now that doesn't mean you got to go in there and buy a ton of stuff uh, right before the ECB meeting uh, which I till told people to lighten up their positions because there's enough stocks out there which still have a long way to go so uh, towards the high so there's ample time you, you can do your work um, during trading hours instead of having large lumpy positions overnight and the ECP decision doesn't go the right way and you're basically done um, but you obviously don't want to do that so obvious uh, so trade management is key trade management is key um, so let's do this here so at this point if you if you extrapolate it out we're looking at about 2030 max move and at this point you can see here uh, 2011 on the S&P 500 would be entering this rising wedge you can see that let me get the pointer make these lines I don't have too much time left here three minutes left like they say picture is worth a thousand words so learn how to read clueless say trading charts it's unbelievable stuff that I draw Sometimes I don't even follow through some of my stuff all the way because the volatility algos, you know, get us all nervous and, and twitchy. And the larger trade and the larger the size of your trade, obviously, the more nervous you are as it vacillates and, and, and wobbles and fluctuates, you know, during a certain day. But saying all that, we all are learning every single day. But these charts are tremendous the way I draw these things. So try to maximize them as much as possible. Try to learn how to read them. Try to read the internals, a lot of stuff. That's the reason why you should sign up for the sessions. And, okay, enough plug on that. So here we're looking at uh, 2010. We entered this zone here. There'll be a fast move up to about 2030. So is 2030 out of the picture? We closed at about 1990, 1989 yesterday. Um, no. So 1990, 10, 30, so 40 points, 40 times 6. It's another 200, uh, 240, 250 points on the, on the Dow is not something, you know, out of realm. So that's it. Um, oil, important charts. These are the things that make or break you as a trader. Not trading oil per se, but I'm talking about the proxy. So let's take a look at the, the uh, of oil. This is a powerful chart. I showed a macro chart going back weeks and weeks, going back to 2007, I believe, yesterday. Very important. If you look at this pattern symmetry here, okay? If you look at this pattern symmetry, let's say we take this as a uh, point of complete breakdown, 50, all right? Not 65, 50. So look what's going on. Definitive double bottom, which I caught, and then you're moving here you might get a pull back here but one with the other first level of engagement and then next level of engagement bottom line is this 4042 level is coming to a theater near, near you very soon no question in my mind you have uh, warm weather outside driving season coming look at the simple factors forget about OPEC forget about all that stuff and then this, in, on, on, on the flip side, helps all these oil companies and all these high-yield junk bond situations start to alle alleviate some of the fears, which is a key ingredient for the market. Brazil is another major factor that's getting played out that no one's talking about. I put an article out there for everyone to see. Read it. That's important. Brazil is cleaning house, and that is generally positive for emerging markets and commodities. Welcome to Clueless A Trading. Need the referrals. Have a great day. God bless you all.